well done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now, I feel suddenly with your father as though he had something wrong with the chest area. Because as I'm asking him mentally, you see, you can't see this happening, but I'm mentally saying, well, can you show me something or tell me something more? Uh, he's saying here, and it's as though either he had something wrong with his chest that seemed to make him collapse or double over. Because, and it hit him suddenly, That's because right. it's as though he was going around his day-to-day -day work or his day-to-day, -day, um, well, sure, work, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and suddenly... That's right. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I yes, I do. I feel we tried to survive <clears throat> and so on, but there was no, uh, no success. Mm -hmm. But to tell you something else, he says, well, I loved to think that I would die in harness. And that's where God was kind to him. He died in harness, in a oh, way. Oh, yes. You understand mm -hmm. me? So he lived as he died, <coughs> or he died as he lived. That's and true. that was the way he wanted to go, if he had a choice. That's true. All right? Mm -hmm. There were twins in the family. Yes. Weren't there? Yes. He said the twins in the family. Yes, there's two sets of them. Two sets of twins, that's fine. But he also says there is a Gemini, too. Yes. <laughs> is that right? Uh -huh. That's exactly right. Oh, boy. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, dear. And uh, I'm so pleased that I was used as an instrument so that your father could get that message across to you. And he's been waiting to get it across to you for a long time. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Father, dear. <laughs> All right. So who do we want to go to next? And I uh, don't choose, they choose. Okay? <laughs> I'm just a vehicle, and I feel their impression to go to... Uh, I want to come to the lady here, all right? So as I'm linking with you... Oh, sorry, you haven't got the microphone. As I'm linking with you, um, I feel very strongly a lady who also... Uh, you're rather strong-willed and determined. Yes. And I feel with you, you like to be in charge too. But you see, there's a creative ability with you that is very important. The lady here was a, a business lady, you understand? Yes. With you, you're a business lady, but you have a creative feel behind you. That's right. And I feel uh, that uh, in your creative field, you're an absolute tartar. And I mean that kindly, <laughs> and I mean it lovingly. You understand? You're an absolute tartar because everything has got to be just perfect. And unless it is, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And you are tireless. You've got a terrific amount of physical energy, nervous energy. In fact, you could burn the candle at both ends and not even flinch. Very true. And you've been heard to say, oh, people brainwash themselves to eight hours sleep and <laughs> who needs it? Do you understand that? Yes. And, and this is the, the, what I'm being told about you. They're brainwashed. They don't need eight hours sleep. Right. They just think they do and it's out here so they think they have to have it. My God, I've got up, had three hours sleep and gone on and worked in my younger days and I've done this and this and this and that. Now, <coughs> <laughs> Responsibility falls lightly on your shoulders. In fact, in essence, when I say lightly, uh, let me rephrase that. You love to take on responsibility. Right. If you didn't have it, you'd be as bored. You would be... Uh, okay. You, you would feel so uh, unfulfilled, is the word, because you like to feel that in the field that you're in, you're getting ahead, you're forging ahead, you're getting on top, you're doing what you have to do. But you're also being trusted in a position of responsibility. Right. But you like to call your own shots. And I also feel in some way you could be connected and tied up very much in a man's world. Do you understand me? Yes. Because it's like men, I can do whatever they have to do. They don't hold any fears yeah. for me at all. Right. And I feel that you have to earn the respect of the males whose profession you invaded. Exactly. You understand? Whose profession you invaded. And because, you know, they look as a woman in this, you know that? And you said, that's all right. Mind you, in the first initial stages, there were some little queeges in your tummy here, you know, and you're thinking, oh, my God. But you thought, no way. And you just pushed on ahead there, and you proved yourself so much so that you earned respect from the very individuals, the, the, the males, mm. in the sense of, well, you know, she's got something. And your heyday was made when two men, two men, 
still living, started to consult you. Yes. And when you said, you're, you're coming to me? Because these, one of these men at least was quite well respected in <clears throat> his field. So that when he came to consult you, it was a real feather in your cap. Can you understand that? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Um, I want also to speak to you of an incident where um, I get a choking feeling. Right. Would you have known a lady who choked, please, or had a choking fit, or had a very sensitive throat? A lady? Yeah. To me, it's, it's as though I'm feeling this choking sensation in the throat here. Did you know someone who had a suspected thyroid problem, please? Yes. Thank you. Because when you couldn't remember, I said, come on, can you give me something on it? And they said it was because of a thyroid problem yes. that this lady had. Okay? So there's your answer, right? But at the same time, did you know a gentleman who also had problems with the throat. Now, not in the same, uh, same category. To me, it's as though the man uh, was very, very ill, and he was too weak to speak. It's almost as though he uh, lost consciousness, regained it. Can you yes. understand me? Yes. It was an inverted, in and out loss of consciousness. It was an older man. Can you follow me here? And feel through that, I could not speak. I could not verbalize myself. Uh, as much as I would like to. I never knew him. You know of him? But was he connected with family, please? Yes. Because I want family for this man. And whether you knew him or not doesn't really matter. No, I never knew but him. But the point is, this man did have these lapses of consciousness. He was an older man. He did have difficulty in vocalizing uh, his... his uh, Probably. Yes. And therefore, for the, and who's Tom, please? Tom, tell me. Wait a minute, I think I'm going along mm -hmm. here. You are. I'm going along here. I've finished with you, dear. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. So I'll keep the link, and if you pass the, the microphone along to the lady at the end, suddenly I felt this cut, and that does happen. And you know, really, when there's only one telephone booth, sometimes they get a little impatient, right? Right. So <laughs> you're the lady that can accept Tommy uh, as, as knowing someone with that name. Yes. But would you also know the name of Dave, please? Dave or David? David. Yes, because I get that you would know the name David as well. Um, I also feel within you, madam, um, I am not feeling that you would belong to any specific religious group. Can you understand me? I do. Uh, because I feel that with you, you take the eclectic view. I do. Which means I, you embrace Excuse me. Now, that was not me sneezing, although I uh, portrayed sneezing. <coughs> um, you would have known someone who suffered with hay fever. <coughs> yes. Yes. Right. Because quite often, when I'm talking to someone, I get the symptoms impressed on me. Mm -hmm. There's no discomfort. It just, we, we learn to expect. Very That's good. why I said, that was not me. Now, I'm hearing the name of Jim, too, being called, yes. that you would know and understand. And I'm feeling that Jim has passed over. Would you follow me here? Yes. Because it's Jim who is giving this communication to me. Oh, how lovely. And he's also you. saying, well, you must have talked on this subject in many, uh, because to me, it's like, I want to prove to you. I want to prove to you. And in essence, it's like saying, well, um, I don't think he was all that easy to talk to on the subject. Thank you very much. Uh, in the sense of gullibility, he would test everything. Yes. He was a great tester. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's saying. It was not easy for me to talk on anything of this nature with a gullible attitude. I had to test it. I had to prove it. But he said, it's true, you know. It's true. Very good. Because he says, you know, we did have discussions, didn't you? Oh, I was the proverbial why kid. Well, right, no. but he says with him. Oh, yes. You did have discussions. Mm -hmm. And he says at the time we would talk, but now I have to say it's true. Sometimes he'd have to say I'll have to consider that and come back. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> he just said it's true, you see. Because that's how he's giving it out to me anyway. 
And so, therefore, uh, relating to me is knowledge on these subjects that we are discussing right now. Yes. All right? Now, you're very interested in the mind. The mind to you is one of the most fascinating subjects in the human race. Of course. No, but I'm, I'm saying to you, some people say, well, but with you it is. And I feel uh, you'd have made an extremely good psychologist. I study psychology a lot. All right, but I feel you would have done. Because of your interest in people from a humanitarian level, mm -hmm. on top of it, a curiosity. Now, I'm not saying you are Aquarius, but no. uh, you've got the Aquarian, I want to know. Uh, on you, you know, there's a water side in your family. Oh, yes. Isn't there? In fact, there might be about three water signs in your oh, family. Oh, yes. Because there seems to be a surrounding of water signs with mm -hmm. you. All right. Very interested in astrology, too. <coughs> yes. Very interested. In fact, it goes so far as to say you studied. I teach. Okay, you studied, you teach astrology. All right. And a very, but you do it not just from the point of view of the astrological signs, you do it in an in-depth way for the spiritual, the esoteric, as well as the ordinary connotations that a lot of astrologers put on it. That is very correct. Right. So here you have a person with the in-depth ability to go really deep, far-reaching, and explain much more about astrology than the average astrologer or teacher of astrology does teach. I like to think that. Uh, before I go on to somebody else, they're speaking of the problem you had with a person who was Aries. Yes. You had a very stiff problem with an Aries personality. Yes. And boy, they bugged you, and they bugged you, and you had to sort of really be very patient with this person. Yes. And they really tried your patience to the limit. Indeed. And in the end, you just blew. Well, I don't know that I did that. Well, he, they just, well this man says, you, you've got a father that's gone over as well. Yes. But I didn't just want father, you see, because there's an aunt that passed over that would link with you on your mother's side of the family. No, that is not so. My mother didn't have an aunt. I mean, no. a sister. Well, is it a sister-in-law, please? No, she didn't have a brother either. No, 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 no. You, you, did your father then have a sister? No. Well, I've got an aunt here, I'm sorry, and she comes as an aunt. And I have to be honest, she did link with your mother. Well, she may have been a very close person to my mother, but my mother didn't have a brother or a sister. Well, was there a person very close to your mother that was like a sister to yes. her? Yes. That you would call auntie? Yes, if I had known her, I would have. Well, she's saying aunt. This is how she's putting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And she's coming as an aunt. Well, then she cared. Okay. And I'm hearing the name and of I'm Claire. Yes, her name was Claire. Thank you. Because she just said, tell her Claire. <laughs> that's amazing. All right? My mother's best friend. Oh, well, that's all right. She just said, tell her Claire. Mm -hmm. So this is the lady that comes as an aunt to you. You understand? Yes. So thank you, dear, and carry on with the good work. Well, thank you. You've been quite accurate. Thank you very much. Good. Oh, now I don't know where I'm going yet, do I? So we have to wait and see. Golly, it's hard. I was about to work out. All right. Um, where do I want to go? I want to come to the lady across from me now, please, dear. And um, I, I'm sorry to be saying lady this and that. You know, I well, I'd rather be called ask, a lady. <laughs> ask your names because I didn't want to be aware of the names of any one of you. Uh, and uh, as I, I, I did link with you, the first impression I got, I didn't hear of boys, but I felt uh, the very fact that uh, you would understand the feeling of a very difficult birth. All right. Can you understand me here? Mm -hmm. You would understand when I spoke of a person who had a very difficult birth. In fact, there were two ladies in the family that had difficult births. Yes. Do you understand me? Yes. Not just the one. And I feel with one of the births, there was a um, suspicion at one time of a caesarean. I have Although, no idea. Although, I was going to say, although, later, it was not a cesarean, it was a breech birth, or something like a breech birth, because the child had to have assistance in order to be born. Yes. I want also to bring your memory to bear on an, a gentleman who I feel was ill for quite a period of time. There was no shift, or rather short, sharp transition. This man was ill for a period of time, and I would also say that by the time uh, 
when the time came round for him to make his departure, uh, he was a little fed up with himself. And also he was rather cantankerous by this time because he made everybody's life a bit of a hell. That's his words, not mine, right? Not really. Well, he's just saying... He, he may have thought so, but well, not really. Well, he was rather cantankerous, he said, a little crutchety, a little impatient. You forgave him in the sense that he had gone through so much, so you excused him, but he was a little fractious. That's what he's saying. <laughs> now, was he? Honestly? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's the way he's giving or coming to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel with him he must have lost weight. Yes. Because he said, I was only a shadow of my former self. Now, to me, I don't know if this man had cancer, but I'm feeling cancer spreading through my body with this man. Yes. And it was maybe about a year and a half to two years that this man was ill. I do not want a short-lived cancer feeling, you know, like six months. That's right. It was a long, long uh, process. I would also say from him that there were times when they spoke of an operation. Yes. Uh, this man was definitely family. I don't know if he's a father, but I'm getting a very strong fatherly feeling with this man. The man with the cancer, do you understand yes. me? Yes, yes. And so, because uh, he was a father, I feel a father yes. is giving his love to, to you as a person. Yes. Oh, so there's a man who died quite quickly, please, quite suddenly. Yes. And this man was definitely in family. Yes. Definitely. There's two ways about it, because he says, blood of my blood. Yes. So you were of his blood, you yes. understand? Yes. Well, this could be a father, because the point is here, I've got a fatherly figure that keeps on feeding yes. to me this feeling of fatherly feeling. Mm -hmm. You understand? So he's mm -hmm. possible he could have helped this other man communicate, because this father of yours just went like that with his fingers, telling me his demise was pretty quick. That's right. All right. So here we have the two. I hear the name of Robert as well. Robert or Bob, madam? I'm sorry. Look, dear, this person... Did your husband use his mind quite a bit in his work? Yes. Because they're telling me that your husband worked a lot more mentally than he did physically. Right. Now, by the same token, this man, Bob, would have been a colleague, a worker in your husband's field of work. All right. Can you place him now? Yes. Right. So this is where they say Bob exists. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. And I'm thank pleased you that much. your father sort of made things clearer so that uh, you could accept these things. Okay. Very much. Was the man with the cancer an in-law, please? No, the man with the cancer was my husband. Your husband? Yes. Ah, okay. And he was cantankerous with his boys before he left because he wanted to teach them as much as he could before he left. And I think he was just telling me that he realized that. And I appreciate that so much. The man who passed quickly was my father. Your father. Okay. Yes. So it's natural he would be with your husband then That's trying right. to sort of help him communicate. Uh -huh. That's right. Okay. That's fine. How old are you? <laughs> Again, I presume from the impressions that I'm listening to that she was fairly accurate with you. Very accurate. Thank you. Yes, it's amazing, and I'm, I'm glad to, to know that he really wanted his boys to know that he wasn't that cantankerous. <laughs> but isn't it reassuring to get such commentary? Yes, very, and very reassuring. any connection at all that she has with you? It's amazing, just Thank amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, uh, there's one lady here that I haven't been to, all right? And uh, the first thing I want to say... Uh, to you, dear, is that your nerves have never really been your strong point. Do you understand me? Yes. And I'm going back with you now to childhood, when you were rather a timid, uh, very, very, very sensitive child. I wouldn't be surprised if you weren't afraid of the dark. Yes. And would also feel sensitive to atmosphere, to people, very, very easily hurt, and could quite easily, by one harsh word, be reduced to tears or reduced to uh, become withdrawn. Um, very much a person who mother meant a great deal to. Can you understand me here? I can feel this pull to mother. Well, father was a figure there, but mother, it was while she was around, and usually the daughters go for their fathers, but here with you, I do feel very definitely 
a mother uh, feeling that I want my mother around me at all times, and yet feel in some way that you didn't exactly feel that you got from mother that which you needed. Yes. Now, do not misunderstand me. I do not feel that your mother was neglectful or anything like that. It was her attitude, not anything else. She looked after you well in every way except the feeling way. And that was a source of, um, I'm going to use the word unhappiness for you, uh, because you felt a lack there. Yes. And strange enough, would turn to father to fulfill that lack, would you understand? Yes. Now here again, with father, I get a certain feeling of not absent-mindedness, but an abstract, it's as though he would caress you, but his mind would be on something else. Can you understand what I'm saying? Yes. <coughs> and uh, for that reason, even though the caress was enough for you, just the touch, the caress, but as you grew older, you began to, your father must have been a very deep thinker or a man who was more concerned with the inner worst workings of the mind rather than the outer goings on of life. Does this make sense to yes, you? Yes, it does. Yes. And so you could sense this withdrawnness as a child that you didn't understand until later when you grew older, the reason for this abstract attitude of your father's. Mother was very positive. There was no illusion or abstract feeling there. Can you understand me? Not at all. This positivity with mother made up for dad's dreamy kind of absent-minded attitude with you. Um, you don't like anything that jars. Uh, any loud noises, any upraised voices, any arguments, forget it. I don't want to know. If you're talking to me, wait until you've cooled down, and then I'll discuss it with you, but not while you're angry. This is your attitude. Nor will you allow anyone to bait you into anger. You feel that anger is degrading in a sense. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So, uh, and, and you're easily uh, upset, so... Uh, that's it. Uh, you won't have anything to do with it. Now, I have to say, Hugh, Hugh, uh, come on, <coughs> come on now. Who and what? This is a little aggravating. Your father is here. You, you, your father has gone over, please? No. He's still here? Yes. Well, there's a man comes as a father, and uh, he's so darned elusive. That's the problem. Thank you. Have you got a father-in-law that's gone over, please? From a previous marriage. Yes. Because I asked him again, and he says, I'm father-in-law. So, okay, he, that's why it comes as a father figure, right? So from a previous marriage, you have a father-in-law that has since departed this world. But boy, is he a uh, strong character. Wasn't he a strong character, this ex-father-in-law? Because I want to pound on here and say, <laughs> it's me, all right. And uh, he wants to apologize to you for his son. He should. <laughs> I don't know, dear, but he just said, I want to apologize to you for my son. Because he said, my son was very much like me in many ways. Rather chauvinistic. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Okay. You see, I love the truth they speak now. There's no more hiding behind a facade. There's no more what I call an Eleanor Rigby hiding her face in a jar by the door. <laughs> they are who they are, and they have to uh -huh. say who they are, because uh, they have to face up to one thing, and that's the truth of who and what they were, okay? Mm -hmm. So he knows no shame. He just is contrite that his son behaved so badly to you. But he said, I'm happy to say that now I know how wrong I was and how difficult I made it for those that were around me. And I'm so sorry. That's the beauty of it. Do you understand? Yes. Well, bless you and thank you. Thank you And I want much. to thank all of you ladies for being 
so kind. Uh, if I have helped any of you in any way, it is my pleasure and privilege because, as I said earlier, it is my life's work. It is something I believe in. And I know those, there may be those who may not go along with the type of work I do. But I always go along and think, well, Joan of Arc was burnt at the stake because she heard voices. Later, she was made a saint. I don't expect I shall have a sainthood. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I know that I'm feeling that I'm doing the work that I feel, not only myself, but others who have the ability to be used as a channel or means of communication are fulfilling a wonderful service to humanity by taking away the fear of death and putting hope in its place. Bless you and thank you. Now, I don't know if Harold wants to say anything. I think he does. <laughs> thank you again, Frida, for your wonderful demonstration of spirit communication. Thank them, Harold. They're the workers. Uh -huh. I'm just the operator. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Frida and I will return in a few moments for a closing comment. Okay, here's one for you. What is smaller than a bread box, weighs less than a dictionary, and fits easily into an attaché case? The Technicolor Portable Video Cassette Recorder from Vidco. Less than seven pounds in weight, three inches thick, and designed to use quarter-inch tape, this recorder is the ultimate in portable video convenience. Hook it up with your favorite video camera for use at home or in the office. See it at Vidco, the source for home entertainment, 7972 East 41st Street. Thank you again, Frida, for your wonderful demonstration of spirit communication. I'm sure all of your viewers who have witnessed this demonstration will never forget it. I hope it has brought the reality of your spirit friends and loved ones a little closer to you. Frida, do you have a final message that might be helpful to our viewers? Yes, I think St. Paul said it right when he said, test the spirits, because we know that uh, in every profession, there are those who are not strictly honest, and it would behove anyone who wanted to sort of seek further for themselves to go with an open mind, but also with a mind that will, uh, is not gullible. Gullibility is a big mistake. I would suggest that anyone interested in this subject who is a highly, uh, you know, highly nervous or anything like that should get knowledge, gain experience through knowledge, uh, find out the, um, the bona fide authorities uh, and test out for themselves. Um, to me, it's a sort of seeking situation where we have to rely on our God-given common sense, on our reasoning power, on our logic, and uh, test everything that's given to you. Thank you, Frida. That's wonderful advice. If any of you wish any further information, write to me, Harold Sherman, ESP Foundation, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72201. Goodbye for now. He speaks that there has been some discussion regarding change. Has there been some discussion regarding a change in job? Well, my husband changed jobs, oh, how about three or four months ago? That's fine. That's, that's recent enough. That's recent there was enough? discussion regarding a change of jobs Hi. and also a younger member of the family regarding a change of residence. Oh. Huh. Um. I guess it, could it be my daughter that was living with us has changed? Well, that's a younger member of the family that's uh, talked of a change of residence. Right, yes. All right, so she's gone.
We at Vidco are pleased to announce the formation of the Vidco Video Cassette Rental Club. In addition to being able to rent the finest in movie entertainment, club members enjoy a variety of benefits, including discounts on blank tape, advance notice of sales, and a monthly newsletter. As a special introductory offer, Vidco will let you rent two tapes for the price of one. We're looking forward to serving you through the club, so won't you stop by and join today? Vidco, the source for home entertainment, 7972 East 41st Street. It takes on a new meaning when you gently fall asleep to a song and awaken to a smile. When you can set your life to music and make every moment more special. Or capture a single precious moment and hold it for all time. We want to help you see and hear the beauty of the world better than you ever have before. Sony, the one and only. You'll find Sony at Vidco, 7972 East 41st Street.